In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an awesome tool called Classroom Screen. It will be the only screen that you will need on your desktop as you facilitate your lessons. Here we go. We'll start by going to classroomscreen.com. Once we arrive at classroomscreen.com, we'll see that we have a picture on our desktop. We can change this up if we just click right here on background. Once we click on background, we'll then be able to see a few different options, solid colors, or we can upload our own or even choose a live moving background. I'm just gonna select this chalkboard. The first icon here allows us to be able to change the language of everything on the page, but I speak English, so I'm gonna keep it the same. If we click on the third icon, this is a random name picker. We'll see that if I have a few different names in the random name picker, if I click choose, it will automatically select one of the names that is listed there. I can also save it or upload or import a set of names. At the same time, I have the opportunity to be able to add two of these random name pickers onto the screen. I can then use one of them as a number picker by clicking on the dice button and then click one, two dice or three dice and be able to roll them for a random number. I can remove them by selecting the minus one to remove one or clicking the X button to remove both of them at the same time. The next thing I have available is a sound level. This would be more practical if I were in a classroom setting, so it would be able to use my microphone. I'd click start and allow it, but it would then be able to measure the noise level in the microphone. I can change the sensitivity and everything. There's also a bell there as well. Here under the QR code, I actually have the ability to be able to create a QR code with the information that's typed in the screen. So if I type in wileybrazier.com, it will change the information so that the QR code redirects the person to whatever I put in the URL. At the same time, I can click the plus button to make it larger as well so that it is easier to read. And I can add another one here as well. If I click the plus one down at the bottom, I can also add a second one. I can move it around by just grabbing on to the, to the arrows here. I can close all of them by clicking the X. The next feature that's here is an actual interactive whiteboard. I can click the drawing icon. Here I can have a, a variety of colors that I can use to write anything. I can change it to a variety of types of paper so that students or I can write on. I can change how wide it is by clicking the minus button. I can also clear it by clicking on the X. If I click on the plus button, it will allow me to change the types of paper that are available here for students or for myself. There's even a music sheet and a coordinate plane. I can add on top of that a second interactive whiteboard as well where I can actually upload pictures and screenshots. I can make it larger by clicking on the plus button here. I can also move it around and be able to do all of the same things that I could on the larger one, except I can't have a variety of types of paper. I can also, if I click on the text, I also have the ability to type whatever I like on the screen. I can make it larger or smaller, but it gives me a total notepad so that I have the ability to take notes and things of that nature. All of the basic features that are available in standard notepads are here. I can also add a second one by clicking on the plus button as well so that I have multiple of them on the screen. If I were in a classroom or in a video hangout, I might be able to use the work symbols. This could be silence or whisper or 
ask a neighbor or work together. And I could have two of those as well by clicking on the plus button. And we can see I can move those around, put maybe one for one side of the classroom and then one for the other side of the classroom. Next up is the traffic light. If I click on the traffic light, it puts a standard red, yellow, and green traffic light. I can, of course, also click the plus one button to have two of them at the same time. And then there is the timer. If I click timer, it gives a variety of features. I can have a standard timer that will count down from whatever time. If I click on this particular plus, it will set a loop for me. I also have the ability to click on the second timer and I can make this one something different where I can have a stopwatch timer and have it start here, set my laps and so on. The last thing that's available here for me is a just traditional clock. I have an analog clock here and a digital clock here. I also have the ability to add a second type of clock. I might want to use it as a calendar so I can have the date here daily. I can also get more space on the screen by hiding the icons and clicking on this down arrow here so that I can have more screen to use in the middle. The last thing I have available to me is an exit poll. So if I click here in the bottom right corner, here I can then allow students to be able to give their feelings. I can ask a question, what did they think of today's lesson? They can give their feelings. It will show the total number of votes in the upper right hand corner. I can show the results, hide them, reset them, and then limit the type of options that the students have available to them. So this is something that I could click for them on, or they could click on the way out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a comment below and share it with a colleague or on social media. Let me know if there's something you want me to cover and I'll make a video for that as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell so you get notified when I upload new content. Thanks for watching. See you next time.